Hi everybody, a really fun effect that ties together a lot of the various DOM methods that you might have learned about, such as figuring out where your mouse cursor is, adjusting the rotation of an element, accessing DOM elements, a lot of interesting things can be seen in this fun example here, which is really, I don't have a good name for it, but I just call it the eyes that follow the mouse cursor. So you can see my mouse cursor, you can see the eyes on this little robot-like element kind of just following the mouse cursor around. And notice that the eyes not only follow the mouse cursor, the entire head actually tilts a bit to kind of, you know, go in the direction of the mouse cursor as well. So it's both the rotation of the eye, but the entire face also kind of shifts along with it. So there's a lot of really cool techniques that are hidden behind this very seemingly simple example. And so in this video, we're gonna go into a lot of detail into how to go ahead and build this from scratch. And so it's gonna be a hoot, let's get started. So the first thing I encourage you to do is pause the video, go to this URL, bit.ly slash ice underscore follow, and play with the example in your browser. You'll see an exact version of what we're going to be building, but you get to kind of see how it feels when you're moving the mouse cursor around, how quickly everything moves, and just get a good understanding of all the various pieces that you're able to kind of tie together as part of playing with it. Because really the main reason is this. Before you get to watch me build it, I highly encourage you to kind of try this on your own because the best way to learn is for you to actually try building this example yourself. And the best way is to get your hands dirty. And you will probably have some difficulty here and there, but knowing how to Google for the right terminology and running into errors, doing some debugging, is one of the best ways for you to kind of learn how all of this really works. So definitely before you watch me code it all up, go ahead and take a step back and pause the video launch your code editor and try to build all of this on your own. And some of the things we'll be covering as part of building this is how to center an element, how to style the element. You know, we, everything you see there is a DOM element. There are no images or SVG elements, it's just DOM elements made to look like a, a robotic face with a couple of eyes and the, the eyeball itself. Then calculating the mouse position is a big part of it. Calculation rotation angle is related to that. And then the actual face itself kind of tilting with the mouse cursor, there's a little bit of 3D perspective and tilt. And there's a big part that is also performance to make sure we're doing this in a way that doesn't cause a whole lot of you know, sluggishness and, and jank. And so we're gonna take all these topics and these will be all covered is essentially in terms of code snippets and some slides as we go along. Okay, so now let's go ahead and build it. You know, whether you tried it on your own or just wanna follow along, it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and start building this example from a very blank document. And so what I have here is, I kind of split my screen into two halves. On one half, you have Visual Studio Code, which is my code editor of choice. You can use any code editor you want, nothing really matters. And then here we have a, a live preview of the example we ultimately want to end up with, which is exactly the same version of what you might've seen in a larger screen when you went to the URL earlier. And here is actually the blank page that maps to the code editor you see right here. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing periodically is writing some markup, writing some code, and then going into the screen and it's refreshing the page. And you'll kind of see the progress of what is being built as it's currently being created. All right, so we have a blank document. I just have it called eyesfollowvideo.htm. And there are many ways of getting started. In VS Code, you have this handy shortcut where I could just start with the, the exclamation mark. And that gives me the bare minimum pieces needed to get an HTML page off the ground. So I'm just gonna call this one eyes follow mouse cursor video. And I'm calling this so that way the title doesn't get conflated with what I have here. And so I went ahead and saved this change after I made that small change to title. And now you can see that ice follow mouse cursor video is now being displayed on screen. All right, so this is actually a good starting point. You know, the code editor is up and running, the browser is giving a live, not a live preview of it, but a preview of it. And so now let's go ahead and just get the, the basic visuals of our application up and running, the, the, the robot face, the, the eyeball, and the eyes themselves. And so the way it's gonna be built is kind of like this. And so I have a div element, there's gonna be a lot of div elements here. And the first div element is gonna be calling it class eye container. And this is gonna be essentially the, the face, the housing for everything we're doing here. And then within it, there are gonna be two div elements, div class equals i. And similarly, there's gonna be another div element whose class value is i. These are gonna be the left and right eyeballs that we're going to be dealing with. Now, if I save this document and refresh the page, we're not gonna see anything here because div element by itself right now is just purely a containing element. There isn't really any visuals that are going along with it that we're going to be seeing. 
And so within each eyeball, within each eye, we're gonna have the pupil, the little black dot that actually rotates and follows the mouse cursor around. So I'm gonna call this one div class equals pupil, if I can spell it correctly. And similarly, there'll be two of them. So I'm gonna copy that line and paste it into here. And so right now we have the basic HTML structure for what is currently gonna be the face, eye container, the eyeballs, eye and eye, and both the pupils, the two div elements whose class value is pupil. All right, so now that we have this very basic starting point going, let's go ahead and add some CSS to give these some visuals, give it some looks. So it kind of starts to look a little bit more like what we have here, as opposed to the very blank screen that we have right now. And so let's start with the first level, which is a body element. We know that there's a nice bright yellow color that is currently being you know, specified. So background color. I'm not gonna go fancy here. I'm just gonna type in the keyword yellow. Normally I type to have a complicated set of hex values or HSL values that I provide here. Here we're gonna keep it simple. And I'm gonna set the margin to zero so that way there's nothing kind of interfering in terms of where our positioning of all of our elements are. So I made the change, I saved it. Now you can see that we have our basically a, a yellow page with nothing else going on for it right now. Now, the way this face is actually constructed is I'm actually gonna be using multiple layout containers, primarily the grid. And I'm gonna basically divide up my, first of all, the entire face needs to be centered vertically and horizontally on the screen. And within this, I'm gonna create two columns. And one column is gonna have the left eye and the second column is gonna have the right eye. And so we're gonna write some CSS to kind of make all of that happen. And you're gonna see that in a second right now. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is center everything in the screen. So grid template columns one FR and grid template rows 100 VH. This basically specifies the, the full horizontal range and the full vertical range in this case, which is specified by VH. I have another video and article that goes into detail on how to center an element on the page. So you can read that or watch that to go into more detail on that. And next I'm gonna set display to grid you know, maybe it should have been done first, but the order doesn't necessarily matter. And align items center, which means that one part of it's gonna be axis is gonna be centered and justify items center. And this ensures that our entire, everything we have in our body is gonna start from the center horizontal and vertical point. Now, of course, when I hit refresh, we don't again see any of this because there's nothing actually visual for us to see. And so that's where our eyes container, the actual eye itself, will come in. So let me start, let's go ahead and define the style for that one. And so this one, we're set a width with 200 pixels, height, 200 pixels, not too small, not too large. And I'm gonna set a background color. And in this one, again, I'm just gonna use a hex value, I'm sorry, a keyword, this is gonna be tomato. So I'm gonna hit refresh. And once I hit refresh, let's see, we don't see anything yet. And that's because we haven't specified where exactly it is going to be living. And so this is going to be with 200 background color tomato. And aha, uh -huh, I forgot, I misspelled eyes container. So I'm gonna specify the S right here and I'll refresh the page. And now you can see we now have a beautiful red rectangle, tomato colored rectangle to be technically correct on screen. I zoomed in a bit so you can see it there. And notice that I'm coding it live. And so if I make mistakes, I'm not gonna edit it out. You're gonna see me make the mistake. You're gonna see me try to fix it. And that's all again, an important part of learning. And you might have your own style for how you fix things. And you can look at how I tend to approach fixing a bug and maybe, you know, try to mix and match and see if my approach can help in some cases or my, you know, or leave a comment and say if there's a better approach for fixing something. I'm always a big fan of learning new things that you all may know already. Okay, so let's say now we have basically the, the center point of our face currently defined. And now let's go ahead and define the eye as well. And I'm gonna go with the eye first. I'm not done with the eyes container, but I think it's gonna be much easier to see how the eyes line up when you can actually see the two eyeballs kind of showing up there. So I'm gonna do dot eye, and I'm gonna do width 50 pixels. So not too large. It'll be smaller than our overall face. Height is gonna be 50 pixels. So it's gonna be essentially a square right now. And then this border radius of 50%, this ensures that now our eyeballs are fully round. And you're gonna see that in a second. And then background color is going to be white. So let me go and save this change. Let's refresh the page. And now you can see two eyeballs you know, showing up on screen. 
they don't really look like eyeballs right now. It just looks like two circles in the top left corner, like some kind of a flag, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that by going into eyes container and creating the two columns that will house each of the eyes. And so now I'm gonna to go to specify the display type of the eyes container to be grid, display grid and align items center and justify items center and once i've done this let's refresh the page you now see that uh, both our eyes now are centered on screen uh, they're stacked on top of each other which is typically how dom elements work when you have it in this format and so what i'm going to do now is grid template columns and create the the two columns themselves so now i do one fr one fr and if i refresh the page you now see that the two the columns have been created and now each eye is in each respective half of our face so you can see our example is slowly starting to start to come together and let's go ahead and make and change the appearance as well let me make it have a nice rounded corner now right now it's very it's a very sharp edged robot and we'll make it 10 pixels and give it a little bit of roundedness so now you can see a nice rounded corner to it and we're done with the we're not done with the appearance yet let's give it a drop shadow so i'm going to do filter drop shadow 0 30 pixels 70 pixels and give it a dark gray color and notice that i'm not using the box shadow property i'm using drop shadow instead no right or wrong way here but from a performance point of view the filter drop shadow is hardware accelerated whereas box shadow isn't there's also a video and article on that which i also link below but you can always use the filter if you can to kind of avoid any unnecessary problems with that okay so now we're, we're, in a, we're in a pretty good spot right here. We have the appearance of our face. We have the, the eyeballs. Now all we need is the pupil itself. So let me just, you just actually no, I'll leave the spacing behind. I, I like to always just figure out what's the best way to format my, my styles and pages, you know, vertically by having line breaks. Typically you don't, but in this case, I'm trying to leave it there and I might change my mind later on. So we'll go from there. All right, so now we know that pupil is the element that is referenced to have the eyeball be the div class pupil is the it's a reference to the element that we care about for the eyeball it's a, sorry not the eyeball the black part of the eye and so i'm going to go ahead and type in dot pupil and let's go ahead and style this one this is going to be a width of 16 pixels so it's going to be a little bit on the small side compared to 50 pixels for the eyeball 16 pixels of the height and i'm going to give it a position value that is relative because we do want to kind of have it be shifted from where it's going to be normally and we're going to give it a background color and it's going to be black so i'm going to zero 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 i could type in the keyword black as well but you know i like to keep things separate not different every now and then border radius 50 percent this ensures that our eyeball i uh, sorry the pupil is also round and then i'm going to set its position to be just a little bit offset from the very top if actually let me look at what it looks like right now so you can see this is what our eyeball looks like when we specify, I mean, the pupil looks like when we specify it the way it is. And that's because it's starting from the top left corner of the container, which is the eye, which is at zero, zero. So if you draw a rectangle around the eye, you'll see that this is exactly where its starting point begins. And we don't really want that. And so let's go ahead and change the top value to be a calc of actually 50% minus eight pixels, which means, which is essentially, I'm setting the top part from here, subtracting it by half, and then subtract another eight pixels from it, which is ironically the half the height of the actual pupil itself. So that made it centered exactly perfectly. So let me refresh the page. You can now see it's centered perfectly. And then similarly left will be five pixels. And this one, I'm not centering it because I do want it to be slightly offset. So when it is being rotated, you can kind of see that it is kind of following the outside contours of the eyeball and not just rotating on its own. Because if a circle is rotating on its own, they really, you, 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 you can't see it. It's not a gradient, it's a solid black circle. And so you just looks like nothing is actually happening. All right, so right now we're in a pretty good spot. We have our face, we have the eyeballs, the other pupil, they're all defined properly. They seem to be located in the right locations. You know, we'll come back and make some more adjustments to our CSS in a little bit, but right now is a good spot for us to take a, take a small step back and look at the code that we're going to be writing first. And so the so first some of the things we need to think about in terms of the code we're going to be writing is how do we, you know, we want to rotate the eyeball, but how exactly are we going to rotate it? How are we going to get the position? How are we going to figure all these things out? And so for this, I'm going to take a quick detour, go into our slides and talk at a high level about what exactly the rotation of the, of the pupil actually means. So let me find keynote. Let me go into full screen mode, which somehow seems to have 
gotten off. All right, so let's focus only on the eyeball and the pupil right now. This is just the eyeball, that's a single pupil. We're looking at one eye right here. Now, what we really wanna notice is that there's a container that the eyeball is, you know, has a bounding area. And the bounding area actually, you know, hugs the actual eyeball itself, but for visualization purposes, I've kind of kept it in this particular approach. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the position of the rectangle that the eyeball is constrained inside. And I'm just gonna call it eye rect, it's the variable name. No, don't worry about the variable name right now, we'll get to that in the code, but just know that we wanna get the X and Y position of our eyeball's top left corner as its bounding box. That's one value we we'll need to get. The second one we wanna get is its actual position in the center of the eyeball itself. Like what we wanna know is the position in the center itself. And the way we do that is starting from where I rect the top left corner of our bounding box is, we can get the width divided by two to get the center point horizontally, and then get the height divided by two and get the center point vertically, which you can see right here. The eye is kind of smooshed by the outline. Poor slide design there, but you get the gist of what we're trying to do. Now, you combine all that together, if you want to get the center point of our eyeball relative to the entire eyeball itself, it, this is the equation in general. We i dot x plus the offset from the center point, and then i dot y, which is the vertical positioning, and the offset on that side as well. So we just kind of combine those values together. Now, that by itself is interesting, but the reason why it's interesting is this. If you take a step back, we want to have our eyeball follow the mouse cursor. And we can see the mouse cursor is X position and Y position. Very simple in that sense. And there's few, one, one way of thinking about it is, let's draw a straight line from the center of our eyeball, which is what we calculated right here, and to the position the mouse cursor actually is in. And the way we can do that is by figuring out the difference in height, Y diff, the difference in horizontal position, X diff. And you can kind of see that we get it. Essentially, we get a triangle that is great for being able to figure this out. Now, you combine all these values together. These are the, the, the basically the variables we're dealing with and the, the numerical values we're dealing with here. One is the center position from the eyeball. The second is the horizontal difference, X diff. And the last is the vertical difference, Y diff. And then the position of the mouse cursor itself. You combine all these values together, what we then get is the angle of rotation. And that is the part that you can see here between the X diff and the Y diff that we need to figure out. And this is the way we can calculate the rotation of the eye that would be appropriate for this. Now, this might seem like a lot of things to kind of swallow, but the way to think about it is we're drawing a rectangle, I mean a triangle, and the angle of the inside angle, the triangle, is what determines the rotation of the eyeball, which is fully determined by the position of the mouse and the current positioning of the eyeball and all the various things in it. And this is gonna be a little bit, you know, still on a little bit on the confusing side. So let's go ahead and go into code and look at it as slowly as, you know, with each step as we're gonna go on. So first, let's go ahead and define the script element because it's time to get into that part of the, the prompt space. Okay, let me just make sure I refresh the page. Everything looks good. The first thing I wanna do is get a DOM reference to our to the individual eye itself. And so we have two I elements. I only want the first one, which is the left one. So I'm going to set let eyes equal document dot query selector all and dot I. And now you can see that the eyes variable now will reference both of the I elements. And that's completely fine. Next, I'm going to create the I rect, which is the bounding box for the eyeball itself. And for this, I'm gonna reference the eyes variable, but I'm only gonna get the first one. You know, there we have two eyeballs. I only want the first one, which in this case, I'm gonna reference by bracket zero. And that's gonna be just in DOM order. So it'll be the first one right here, which maps to the left eyeball that we see on screen. And so eyes bracket zero dot get bounding client rect. Now get bounding client rect is a very powerful DOM API that gets us a snapshot of the, the position of the element we're interested in and its width and height. So you can essentially have enough details to recreate the structure of the size of that element very easily. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get the, the position of the, the, the eyeball and the container that we're currently in as well. So the container equals document dot query selector and we only have one, so it's going to be dot eyes container, and that's not going to be multiple elements here. All right, you know, we don't get the container right now, but it's going to go ahead and get it out of the way right now itself. 
Okay, let me make the window a little bit smaller so I can see more of what's going on. And so now what I want to do is this. As part of the mouse cursor moving, we want to run all this code to figure out what the rotation of the element needs to be, which means that we need to have an event listener that is listening to the mouse movement. So document dot body dot add event listener mouse move eyes follow and false. I'm basically saying that when the mouse cursor is moving, call the eyes follow function. So function eyes follow. Okay. Now just let's make sure that everything is still working. You know, for me, I always never trust the code that I write the first time. So I'm going to do a console.log mouse moving. And let's just see if this all works. So I'm going to refresh the page. Let me bring up the console. And you know, let me zoom in a bit here. There's a lot of stuff moving on, so you guys have to see that. Notice that as I'm moving the mouse cursor, you can see mouse moving is called. Okay, so our code is doing something. It at least it's working as we kind of would have expected it to work. Okay, so now what I want to do is, as part of each time the mouse moves, I want to calculate the angle. I want to set the rotation of the pupil inside our eyeball. And to do that, we can directly write our code right now. But one of the things that mouse move does, it, it gets run off very frequently. And we want to clamp it down to the frame rate of how quickly our screen is actually refreshing on screen. And that's where request animation frame comes in. If that part doesn't fully make sense and why we're doing it, we don't want our code to run 300 times a second or 1,000 times a second or 100 times a second when our frame rate, the actual capacity our screens have to refresh a screen, is only around 60. And so therefore, we don't want to do unnecessary calculations and slow things down. And clamping it request animation frame is a great way to do that. There's a link in the video also on going into more detail on why exactly we do this. And so you know, it's really about throttling chatty events. So request animation frame, you know, it runs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a function inside of it directly. And so I'm going to go ahead and have an arrow function that is just going to call a function inside of it, a callback very easily. And so that's just gonna be cleared up here. Let me go ahead and close this loop here so that way we can see that nothing exciting is happening that we don't really know too much about. And so now what I'm gonna do is first create the exposition variable, xpos equals e dot page x. And these are the page x property is an argument that the mouse event gives you as part of the mouse move. Similarly, let y position equals e dot page y. Now I could have called it X position or Y position, fully spelled it out, but sometimes it's just okay to have abbreviated values as long as you know what it means. And POS tends to be a shorthand for position commonly. All right, now we're gonna do let X diff. Now these are the values you might have seen in our slides a few moments earlier. So let X diff equals I rect dot X plus I rect dot width divided by two minus the X position and let y diff equals i rect dot y plus i rect dot height divided by two minus the y position. Now this is a direct translation of what we had in our slides a few moments earlier. So you can see these are the values that we are kind of calculating by making sure we get the position of the mouse, the angle ultimately, by using all these values to play a, a big role here. All right, let's go back to our slides. And now here's the interesting part. Now we're going to do let angle. And the way we're going to get the angle is it's trigonometry. Typically there are three functions we tend to look at. We look at cosine, sine, and tangent. In this case, tangent is the one that deals with the opposite versus your adjacent angle. So if I go back to keynote, you can see that we have the opposite value, which is y diff. We have the adjacent value, which is x diff. And the angle we're looking for is the part right here. And so tangent is a great great version of a, a great trigonometric function to use to get this the value that we really need. So let angle, and I'm actually going to do math, and we're going to use the arc tangent because we're going to get the angle as opposed to the tangent value itself. So arc tangent two, and it takes two arguments, the y and the x, the height, and the, in this case, the difference in height and the width. So y diff, x diff. And by default, the value returned by this is a radiant, uh, radian, sorry, radian value. It's a radiant, radian value. And I want to turn it into degrees. So multiply by 180 divided by math dot pi. Okay. 
And so now let's go ahead and just, just for kicks, let's go ahead and console log the angle to see if everything so far is working correctly. So let me go ahead and bring up the page, let me refresh the screen, let me go to console. And you can now see that, yep, we can sort of see that, you know, as I'm moving around the screen, the angle values are changing. Now, it's hard to make out whether these angle values are actually accurate or not. And that's okay, because when we tie in with our eyeball rotation, we'll have a really nice visual way of seeing if the angle value actually is correct. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a value container dot style. That is the element we saw earlier for the container, for the element itself. And I'm gonna set the container Sorry, the container. The container is the reference to the DOM element that is the overall face, the container that we had defined in our HTML ice container. I'm going to set property, and I'm going to set a value called I angle, which is a name, it's a CSS custom property I'm defining. And I'm going to give it the value of angle, which we just have calculated right here. Let me delete the console log. And I'm just going to round it to fixed argument to two degrees of precision and give it a degree value because I am actually concatenating a string here to give us the, the final value of I angle, which will be in degree form. And so now let's go ahead and specify at the very top the where the actual value of I angle needs to be represented. Because in JavaScript, we have I angle, that's great, but we don't know how to apply it yet to the element itself. And that's what we're gonna do right here, where I'm gonna go to the I and where we have the transform, let's say transform, translate Z, because you know we're rotating it, 50 pixels, and then actually let's give the translate Z for now. Actually the translate Z is actually part of the perspective we're dealing with instead. So I'm going to do a rotate X, sorry, just rotate, and I'm going to do var dash dash I angle and zero degrees. Okay, so essentially the transform is being set. I'm using the rotate transform. I angle, which is specified earlier, default is zero degrees when specified. And we're setting the actual value of I angle, which we see here on the container, and it'll just cascade down onto the element itself. All right, now it's the moment of truth. If I refresh this, will this all work? So refresh the page and voila, look at that. The eyeball is currently following everything on screen. And just to see how this works, let me go ahead and bring up the console. Let me go ahead and bring up eyes container. And when I notice that as I'm moving my mouse cursor around, you can see the style called eye angle and then the degree value with two degrees of precision from the two fixed method showing up here. And that cascades down from eyes container into the eye element itself which we know rotates, but notice there's no inline style here because that's I value, the value that we are specifying of I angle is referenced directly in the CSS. So there's no need for an inline style that needs to be specified there, but pretty cool. All right, so now we got pretty much the, the big part of the eyes following the mouse cursor done. Like if you wanted to just say, you know, this is good enough for now, you can, but you know, nothing really is ever good enough because I do think that ability to have the entire face the mouse cursor, it's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. So the, now the next step is, if you wanna make this tilt, there's gonna be a little bit of 3D, a little bit of perspective, a little bit of magic that goes along in that area. And the way we're gonna do that is, we need to essentially figure out the relative position of the mouse compared to width and height of the entire page. And so what I'm gonna do first is just like how we got the rectangular boundaries of our eyeball earlier with eye rect, I'm going to do the equivalent for the entire page itself, or actually the, the container itself. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable right below container. I'm going to call it let container rect equals container dot get bounding client rect. Okay, so now this variable is going to store the x and y position, the width and height, and other interesting values about the dimensions of our container element itself. And so the next thing is that we have all of this and let's go ahead and add the code below the code we have for the eyeball. Just gonna get a comment here, you know, tilting the face relative to mouse cursor. That's an exclamation mark for good measure. Why not, right? And so first thing I'm gonna do is let's get the mouse position relative to the container. So I'm gonna do let mouse x relative to container. 
and I'm being very prescriptive here in terms of the naming and let's give it a capital T and that equals exposition which we know from earlier minus container rec dot x which is the or with the starting position of our container element itself minus container rec dot width divided by 2. This is very similar to us getting the center position of the eyeball earlier. We're now getting the center position of the container rect. So if you look at the example of the red here, it's really I'm getting the horizontal position in the spot just between both the eyeballs, which is the horizontal middle position. And it's really equivalent for the vertical position as well. So mouse y relative to container equals y position minus container rect dot you can imagine it's going to be the same values except x is replaced with y now you could have said why didn't i just copy and paste it in yep you're right i very well could have done that but i didn't for some reason that's okay we are not you know we're not worse off for typing a little extra here and there all right and so now the next step that we have this is to get the angle which is going to be both angles, one for what is the horizontal angle and the vertical angle. And for that one, I'm going to do the container x angle equals, and this is going to be 60, which is just the, the, the intensity of the angle. You can change this to whatever you want once you have everything working. Is mouse x relative to container divided by window dot inner width. And this is essentially getting the position relative to the full width of our container itself. So a value between zero and one. The very left will be zero, at the very extreme it'll be one. And similarly, we're going to do something exactly similar for the y angle itself. And it's going to be minus one because the Cartesian coordinates, the rotation in, in the browser is a little bit different than how you might expect it to be in the real world. So when you're doing the vertical angles, do the, mul the multiply by negative one. Mouse y relative to container divided by window dot inner height. Okay. So, you know, a part of me is like, we've written a lot of code right now, and I haven't actually tested to see if that works yet. That's okay, you know, we will deal with all that in a second. But just for kicks, let me just refresh the page. Let me save this file, not save that file. Refresh the page, go to inspect, and make sure there's no errors in the console. Okay, that's always a good thing to check as well every now and then. If you have a syntax error, if a variable is misspelled or something, your console will give you a, a notification that some something is off here. So, so far we're good. And now let's go ahead and apply the actual rotation itself. So container.style.set property. And I'm going to set the value to be, in this case, a custom value of X angle. And it's got a name. And then it's going to be container X angle dot to fixed two plus degrees. And this time it's going to copy the same line and replace it for the vertical position of everything as well set property y angle container y angle dot fixed plus degrees all right and so right now we have the value set what we don't have yet though is the actual values being used by our css so just like before we need to go to our styles and make some modifications to have this be picked up and so i'm going to go to ice container and the first thing i'm going to do though is actually make sure that it actually works where we have some level of 3D tilting going on. And to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is set an actual transform style, which is going to be preserve 3D. Transform style, preserve 3D. Now, this is one of the things that's going to be helpful as part of not telling the browser that we're going to be not just doing things in X and Y space, but also the magical 3D Z space as well. And so now I'm going to go ahead and transform. And first I'm going to specify a perspective of 500 pixels, which is kind of the distance between the element and our eye. So you can see how much of an intensity of the rotation we will see here. And then rotate X, var dash dash Y angle, zero degrees. And it's not a typo. We are rotating in the X world using the Y angle value because once you go into Z space, things get a little bit different. And so this naming logically made the most sense to me you know you could have said why didn't i just call it y and x angle below you know it didn't make sense when I was talking about it out loud it didn't make a lot of sense so i'm just going to leave it this way and then rotate y var dash dash x angle zero degrees is the default value here okay so now let's refresh the page and notice that once i've done this you can now see our entire face now shifts 
to reflect the position of our mouse cursor. And all thanks to this basically two lines of code that we've seen here. Now we're not fully done yet. There is a certain level where it'd be kind of cool to have our eyeball not just be stuck on the face directly, but have a little bit of depth as well. And so for that one, I'm gonna to go to transform in this area for the eye and specify a translate Z value of 50 pixels. So the eye itself is also gonna be lifted by 50 pixels to give you a certain amount of a parallax kind of an effect. So I refresh the page here, and now you can sort of see that our eyeball is also kind of shifted up by a, a certain amount. Now, we're not, the last thing I'm gonna do is, we have this moving consistently, but it would be kind of good to make sure that we are keeping performance in mind and aren't doing things that are gonna be slightly problematic in some areas. And so I'm gonna go back to ice container, and a typical thing that is probably automatically done for us by browsers these days, but it's good to tell them explicitly, is to create a layer for this element just from a performance point of view. And you can, the typical one is to translate Z to zero, which is a translate 3D value zero. You might have seen that trick a long time ago. The more modern approach is just to say, we'll change and have it be set to transform. So this makes the element, a browser can determine what the right answer is in making sure whether we're gonna be displaying this appropriately or not. And then similarly, the eye also has the appropriate value, but it all is going to basically be, you know, cascaded down because once the eye's container is a layer, the eyeball is a layer as well. And so we have all of that going for us. Now, the thing about the eye that is kind of interesting is that, you know, are we sure this actually is doing something? Let me hit the 150 pixels just for kicks. And when I do that, you can see that everything looks a whole lot different as well. So I'm just going to keep it at 50 pixels and not worry too much about making it look a lot more different than it is right now. And we can now see that our effect pretty much works. Everything we kind of wanted to get done has been done. And you know, just since I'm already here, let me give it a drop shadow as well, just to see how the eyeball looks with the drop shadow applied to it. And you can see, well, we don't want it 70 pixels actually. We want it to be just 10 pixels. And you can see how the eyeball is like, you know, moving in relation to all of this. It doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it just because why not? But but yeah, and so let's go back to our slides and then go ahead and call it a day in terms of like what we've done. And so there you have it, a, an example of creating an ice follow with the mouse cursor and having the face tilt and some other tricks along the way around like drop shadows and perspective and 3D and all these things. So I hope this really covered a, a lot of ground for you in terms of how we can tie together a lot of these very disparate topics into something kind of cohesive to create something kind of cool and kind of fun. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed actually recording it. So if you have any questions about this or any topic, post in the forums at forum.group.com. Don't leave a comment below in terms of kind of wanting to get help because YouTube comments are not great for being able to represent code snippets and more complicated things you want to follow up on and have threaded conversations on. If you like the video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos I'll be creating. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and other places you might find me. And if you like watching videos, if you like reading articles in your browser, there are also paperback editions of all the content where some of these foundational topics we talked about in this video are covered in much greater detail in written form in a paperback or Kindle edition. So go check that out. And with that, I will see you all next time.